Following on from our previous video, we were trying to understand the fundamental theorem of calculus 1 and we got to this stage here where we, um, we understood this component. We created a, a new function and it's defined by this. Now apparently the next part is that um, you, you can actually differentiate both sides. You can actually differentiate both sides. So in this video, I'm going to explain this um, this d by dx thing on the function that we just um, we just created. So apparently you can differentiate this function. So let me explain why you're able to differentiate it. So we we created a um, a function this function here, where it would give us an area from a to x. For any given x, you can work out the area from a to x. So now let's um, let's look at this thing here. Um, suppose x is five. So from from a to five, it will give us an area. Let's just imagine this area is the number ten. It has an area of ten. So when you come to plot it, when x is located at five, it will give us an area of ten. So we would put a cross right here. Suppose now x is six. So that would then give us the area from A all the way to 6. Let's just imagine that this area is 12. So this area here is 12. So on this graph, um, where you plot it from capital, um, where this is X and this is, the f this is the area, capital F of X is the area. So when the area is 12, um, you would plot it at 12. So now let's, let's jump to 7. When X is 7, when x is 7, let's just imagine this whole area from a all the way to 7 is the area. Let's just imagine the area is 13. So on this graph, you can plot it. When it's, seven, when it's located at 7, the area will be 13. So, um, so when you plot the area function, it will look something like this. Let's just imagine it looks something like this. I don't care. So, so when, uh, when, when, um, when x is a there is no area. When x is a, there is no area. That's why the area is zero. And so on. The point here, the point is that this thing here is actually a function in itself and it's continuous and differentiable because as you slide x back and forth, it will, um, it will give rise to a line on this graph. So hang on, let me just clarify something. Let me just clean this up. So what that means is the um, the height on this graph, the height on this graph, represents the area on this graph. So this is the area from a to seven, but on this graph it represents the height. So the height here, so f of the number seven, turns out to be the area. This this has an area of thirteen. So the height on this graph represents the area from a to six on this graph. In our case, this has, an, this has a, a height of 12, this has an area of 12. So uh, here it has an, a height, so f of 5 here, in our case it would, it would have a height of 10. On this graph it will have um, an area of, of, uh, of 10. The point is that this capital F graph looks something like this, I don't care what it looks like, and apparently, well, if this is a continuous, um, well, this is a function here, so if it's a function, then you can differentiate it, so hang on, if it's a function, so let, let's just say, um, if, it ha if it's a function, if this is a function, then, then you can differentiate it, so hang on, so what that means is we start out with this, Apparently, well, this is a this is a line graph here. You can see that here. Well, if it's a line graph, then you can differentiate this. You can actually differentiate it. So you can actually um, d by dx it, if that makes sense. And then uh, if you differentiate the the uh, the left hand side, we are just going to call it capital F prime. So because um, because this is a, a a line, a continuous line, um, you can differentiate it. So differentiating this you would get the height divided by the cross that will then give you the the, grade, the average gradient and then take the limits as h tends to zero. 
then uh, then it will give you the true gradient. So hang on, let's let's try and differentiate this. So to differentiate this this line here, you would get the height. So what is this height here? Well, the height, this height here would be um, would be capital F of x plus h, take away capital F of x, because um, because to get this height here, you would get this whole height, which is this thing here, because you would put this into the x that would then jump to f x plus h and then you would need to take away this length here well this length here is the same as this height here which is f of x so let's start again here to differentiate this line here we would get this height which is given by which is given by um, x plus h take away this height here which is the same as this height here uh, f of x and then you would need to divide it by the across what is this across well it turns out to be h so this this across length is h so you would divide it by h so this thing here gives us the average gradient but to find the true gradient you would take the limit as h tends to zero you would take the limit as h tends to zero then then that's really you finding the gradient of that line well the gradient of that line on, on the left hand side we're just going to call it f prime of x so the point is that it gave us a line graph because it's continuous and differentiable we, we, we can actually differentiate this line graph so that will then give us this thing here so hang on going down here so so it is possible to to um, so originally we had a function like this f of x equals the integral from a to x f t d t well this here is turns out to be a line graph we can actually differentiate it and then on, on the left hand side we don't know what what's happening over here we're just going to call it cap, capital F prime because prime represents us differentiating a function so, uh, so this is nothing more than than a name. Uh, well, capital F when you differentiate it, we're just going to assign a name for it. We're going to call it capital F prime of x. So you you can actually differentiate it. So now let's um, let's look at this thing here. Hang on. So here, um, remember the height here represents the area on this graph from a to x, and uh, and this height here represents the area from a to x plus h so this area here represents the height over here so when you uh, when you look at this thing here what is this thing here well on this graph it would be you putting x plus h into the function and then it would jump to here that would be the height but then on this graph it would be the area from a to x plus h that's this area here from a to x plus h but then then when you take away f of x on this graph f of x is this height here so on this graph it is from a to x so on this graph well what I'm trying to say here is that this numerator turns out to be this area this area here take away this area here so what you're left with is the area in between from x to x plus h so this this numerator this numerator represents the area in between x, in between x and x plus h on this thing here it represents this height remember when you divide it by h it will give you the average gradient so this is h here but we don't care about h for the time being. What I'm trying to illustrate here is that um, this uh, this numerator, which is the height here, turns out to be the area in between x and x plus h. So what that means is this is the um, the area in between in between x and x plus h. So hang on. So the hang on. Bear with me on this. So this numerator here represents this area here. 
and um, and as it turns out that um, we this is very similar to our fish tank scenario so we've got a fish tank here where where the purple area is the amount of water so hang on so this is our fish tank here the amount of water is represented by this thing here and when you divide it by the width of the fish tank from our from our scenario from some of the earlier videos from our analogy the fish tank analogy when you get the area of the um, the fish uh, the when you get the area of the water and then you divide it by the width of the fish tank it represents the height at which the water will settle remember that from uh, from some of the early videos so so this whole quantity here represents the height at which the water will settle the average value of f i will continue in the next video just bear in mind that um, this weird thing here turns out to be the amount of water in our fish tank and this h here represents the um, the width of the fish tank in the next video we're going to investigate what happens when the width of the fish tank tends to zero okay so we will continue in the next video